Hey everyone, and welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Sadai. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Today, excited to be joined by Suresh Matthew, Sadai's founder and CEO. Suresh, great to have you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here, Lisa. Talk to us about Sadai. What are you guys all about? How do you help customers target market, vision, mission? Give us that backstory. Sure thing. Sadai is just a, an autonomous cloud management platform. That's all it is. Now, what comes out of that is the most interesting aspect. The number one thing is your cloud cost savings. We have seen customers saving up to 50% without doing anything. The second is your performance gains. We have seen an application running 99% faster, but that's not common. On an average, we'll save 60%. Number three is availability. There is a term called FCI, failed customer interaction. That's what companies generally measure. This company's FCI was at 3.8 and it was down to 0 0.02 with Sedai. And there are two other outcomes here, our, our byproducts here. The number one is innovation velocity. The, the second aspect is your compliance. With Sedai, everything is logged. Everything is now autonomous, everything is is by your rules that you have specified there. So now things are super compliant for your platform. Excellent, so you talked about cost, performance, availability, compliance. Give us the backstory on the catalyst to start the company. This happened back when you were at PayPal. Give me some of the, the, the things that you saw that were really missing in the market. Yeah, that's a very interesting story. So at PayPal, um, I was managing the largest OpenStack fleet in the world. Right, and one thing we saw is it is extremely hard to keep the reliability up or availability up and efficiency at the same level. So we started looking for platforms outside to realize that there is nothing outside that can really help with this autonomously. So the only option was to deploy people, but that is not going to scale up. That's when we started developing an autonomous platform and the results were illuminating we had 2 million autonomous remediation a year executed in PayPal's finance production. So when you interact with PayPal, when you transact with PayPal, there is an autonomous system behind the scenes. And that is why we thought, you know what, this is not, this is hard for industry to really develop this. Instead, we will probably build a company outside. So that's how I started Sedai. I'm going to think about that the next time I do a transaction on PayPal, which knowing me will probably be later today. Um, with, with the growth of microservices, whether it's Kubernetes or serverless, people are talking about the cost and the complexity of managing and scaling modern applications. Why is that? And what's Sadai's approach to really help remove that complexity for your customers? So Lisa, the, the, there are two dimensions that are not in favor here. One, the number of services when it comes to microservices and the release velocity. Let's take a very simple example of a Kubernetes application that is, let's say 100 applications in a cluster with the VPHP and let's say three metrics on an application. You know the number of constraints this team will have to manage in that month is around 18,000. It's impossible, impossible for your teams to manage it. So you have to have something that can help them manage it. The teams are supposed to do the high level task. The, the guardrails need to be established by the teams, by your SREs and DevOps and engineers. That's what they are super good at. They know they are smart enough to put the guardrails, but they don't have time to execute everything all the time. You need a system that can pick those guardrails and run with it. You don't want a call every day night saying something is down. You want a system, you want a front warrior who can take it up and execute on your behalf based on the guidance that you have given. That is why you see constantly people talking about inefficiency in cloud. Yeah, it sounds quite efficient. And there's a lot of implications that can happen for businesses, whether it's customer churn, brand reputation, the things that really plague organizations that don't get this right. But talk about why the opportunity is still persistent. Why haven't people figured this out another way yet? Um, let's accept the fact it is risky and painful to optimize something because something is running stable in production, you are really trying to really make it efficient. Meaning now you take the responsibility of taking that service that was running smooth, 
looking at the inefficiency and making it efficient. If you look at the number of search services, it's a lot. That's why these alerting systems don't help here. That's why the opportunity is still there. Even the cloud providers themselves will show you where the inefficiency is. Now, executing on it itself is painful. That's what we, we make happen. So SEDA's approach is not to build that dashboard, instead make that dashboard smaller. So we take those action items and execute on your behalf in production. And that is why this opportunity exists because there are alerting tools. There are not a lot of tools that can execute and decide all by itself. An autonomous system is missing in other words. Got it. You talked a number of times already in our conversation today, Suresh, about the breadth of impact of auto the autonomous approach. Let's kind of double click on some of that so the audience understands really the impact that can be made there. How does that specifically help with co cloud cost optimization, which is a huge challenge organizations in every industry are dealing with? Sure. So cost, for that matter is the, the waste stage right now today is almost 40% based on all the, all the data that we have. Now it can be divided roughly into three areas. One, the size of the right sizing of your application, the resources that are allocated to your application. Is it the right vertical size and the horizontal size? Or for Kubernetes customers, it would be the HPA VPA combination, having the right config there. The second aspect is really what infrastructure are you using to deploy these applications into, right? It could be a C5 or an M5. What, the, what works best for your application? What is the right group to be deployed? The third is your purchase plans. Where to buy, what to buy, how to buy. Is it a savings plan? Is it an RI? Is it a spot instance? What is the tolerance of these kind of applications on a spot? Can we use spot maybe for parts of this application and things of that nature? So these are the three steps where Sedai make things autonomous, except for the last, which is a financial purchasing. The first two step, steps, which is right sizing your application and deploying it on the right infra become autonomous with Sedai. So the savings achieved through a mix of engineering and financial optimizations. One of the things that we talk about too, when we talk about performance and availability is that the way that businesses manage that affects revenue. That is very intriguing. Of course, every business is concerned with revenue, right? Can you expand on that in terms of the way performance and availability is managed and how it affects revenue for a company? Sure. So there are a few studies out here again. Um, one that was executed, that was done by Amazon says, 1% revenue would be a result of 100 millisecond delay. So if your website runs slower, the way your customers transact and the amount of transactions to closure would be a lot lesser if your site is slow or experience is poor. And it really depends on the company as well and the amount of traffic that comes in. But on an average, there is a huge impact on, on your revenue based on the performance and experience on your site. And for us, it is most important to measure this in production itself. We figure out what is the right config for your application to perform the best at your peak and not so bad when it's not peak. So it, it manages your cost while giving the best experience for your customers. It's almost like deploying an SRE into production 24 seven is always keeping a look at, keeping an eye on what's going on and adjusting it when it's needed. That's critical for the, the lifeblood of any organization as we, when we talked about some of the, the challenges that businesses can occur, incur rather churn, brand reputation, lost revenue. People, businesses, especially in, in today's dynamic market, don't have time for that. So being able to, to really ensure that performance and availability is there is not just key for keeping revenue, as you said, but it's, it's really key for these businesses being alive. You also talked earlier, Suresh, about how, how Sedai helps accelerate innovation velocity. Talk to me about innova innovation velocity and how you guys help dial up the volume. Yeah, in the current market, without innovation velocity, I think it's hard to stay relevant. So co for companies, it's super important to innovate fast. If you translate that from a business to engineering aspect, it it gets to a, a similar term called release velocity. 
So when you want to innovate faster and give new features to your customers, it means your engineers will have to write code and release faster. Now with release, the biggest problem is 75% of issues are caused by changes, which means release is probably the primary culprit for, for this unavailability or instability in production. There is a whole industry handling it. So there are incident management solutions, root cause analysis solution. Said I will try to really not get you into that incidence. We'll try to prevent incidents from happening. So when you release something, we have a smart gate there that will evaluate your release against the model that we have. It knows your application, how it behaves. It knows what is the cost of it. It also knows how your dependencies react when you release something new. And it'll measure it and give you a scorecard back to your engineers. So now your engineers can look at what they have released, keep track of what is re released, and even go back to them and analyze it if required. We call it release intelligence as a module name. A lot of efficiencies, a lot of productivity is there. I'd love to hear when you're in customer conversations, and I see from your website that you're really talking, and you mentioned SREs, developers. When you're in customer conversations, Suresh, what are the key differentiators that you articulate that really shine a light on the value prop that Sedai is delivering to its customers? In fact, this is the part I enjoy the most. So my, my job is not just about building Sedai, it's about building other companies as well, helping build other companies. For one customer, their NPS score, the, the, the tail end score for them was 60. And with Sedai, it went up to 68 and then to 70. So if the impact of Sedai, if you look at it, it's not about the infra, it's about your customers interacting with you. That experience is getting better with Sedai. That is with first customer. Now I'll talk about another customer. So this was very interesting. I got a call at 6.30, 6.30 PM at night uh, in, in the evening. So this VP of Eng from my customer called me saying her customer, the end customer called her and said, your shopping cart is running a lot faster, smoother today. So what changed? So she went back and checked with her engineering and nothing got released that day. So she was looking at what, uh, what, what was the cause and she called me and asked, you know what, did you do something there? Right. So I went up, went back and checked. It was really said I. So, it is not anymore about really helping just you, it's about helping your customers as well. So that was the second one. And the last one, um, this is a one of the largest cybersecurity company, in fact, the largest. They saw a cost saving of 36% in the first two weeks without clicking a button. So they just had to deploy Sadai, it did its RL and learning and what, what was given back to them is these are the things that you can save and that was 36%. Those are some great customer examples that really clearly demonstrate the value prop that you talked about. You talked a lot about cost optimization, about performance availability, but one of the things that you mentioned in one of in the first customer example is the customer experience. And I think that's something Suresh, that we've noticed in the last few years. People don't have patience for poor customer experience. That is so critical to the health of an organization as is, as you said, with one of them cost savings within a couple of weeks without touching anything. So I'm sure you have many more customer examples that you can share, but where do you want to point the audience to go to learn more about Sedai and where they can maybe even get their hands on it? Nothing. It is not about an if, it's about a when. And we are not we are not alone thinking that way. Gartner released a, a, an article at the start of the year, and it's called Predicts for 2023 Optimization. And the only vendor out there for modern workload was at I. For serverless, Kubernetes and ECS, they recommend or they recommend a platform like Sedai, autonomous platform like Sedai. So we were in that. We were alone in that tutorial for modern workloads. And we are also an AWS uh, partner as well. So if you were to adopt one, please check out our website, www.sedai.io. You can book a demo. You can even start for free. You can all you, you can get to a point where you're onboarding everything. And if you have any questions, you can schedule a meeting with us. Sadai in a league of its own, Suresh Matthew, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, giving us the overview of the company, the catalyst to start it, and the big impact that you're helping customers across a lot of 
industries make. We really appreciate you being part of this CUBE conversation. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for having me here, Lisa. It was my pleasure. I'm Lisa Martin. Keep it right here for more action on theCUBE. As you know, you're a leader in hybrid tech event coverage. Thank you.